There are a lot of troublesome athletes in professional sports. This is especially common in more violent careers like MMA and UFC fighting. Dylan Dennis is one of these people, and here's the CEO of Bellator MMA talking about his return to the scene, or if things continue the way they are now, lack thereof. In this video, we'll be looking at Scott Coker talking about Dylan Dennis' future with Bellator, so stay tuned. First up, Scott Coker says that he had high hopes for Dylan. Scott Coker, the CEO of Bellator MMA, is still unsure about Dylan Dennis. Scott became the president of Bellator MMA on 18th of June 2014, replacing the founder and former CEO Bjorn Rebney. Since he is a martial artist, Taekwondo, and former movie stuntman and combat sports promoter, the move was done with hopes that Scott would make it a less tournament-focused promotion, and he delivered. On the other hand, Dylan Danis is a 29-year-old MMA fighter who signed with Bellator in 2018. It has been over three years since the jiu-jitsu standout and Conor McGregor's grappling coach stepped into the cage, and Scott is uncertain whether he'll ever return. Dylan's only had two professional bouts since he signed with Bellator. Bellator in 2018. The first was in April of 2018 during Bellator 198, which ended with a submission victory over Kyle Walker, and his last fight was the first round submission victory over Max Humphrey at Bellator 222 in June of 2019. In Dublin at the post-event press conference for Bellator 285, Scott said that Dylan is a kid they had a lot of high hopes for, but it seems those hopes might not lead anywhere. Now for Dylan getting sent to sidelines because of knee injuries. The fact that Scott used past tense tells us what position Bellator has taken after his many fits and starts. Dylan was sent to the sidelines because of knee injuries, and over the past few years, he's gotten increasingly more attention due to his numerous feuds with fighters and industry veterans. His prospects seem to be getting worse and worse, because all of his chances to return keep getting stopped due to unexpected matters. Scott had welcomed the idea of putting him on a card in Ireland, where he believed Dylan would pull in support from the community. Why? Well, because he had ties there due to his relationship with McGregor, who was an Irishman. Dylan began working with McGregor in 2015, training him for fights against high-profile fighters such as Khabib Nurmagomedov and Nate Diaz. It's been seven months since then, but Bellator's president still isn't any closer to booking a fight for him. He said that Dylan's a very talented jiu-jitsu fighter, but he's got to stay active, and he needs to want to come back to the ring. Sometimes Dylan calls him saying that he wants to come back, and then sometimes he doesn't hear from him for months. The president said that if he's really serious about returning, then they'll have a spot ready for him, and that they'll definitely make an opportunity for him. Until now, there's been no news of Dylan contacting Scott again, asking to be set up for a fight. Despite the 29 year old saying that they'll have a spot ready for him. Next up, Dylan has many haters because of his personality. The support that Dylan lacks from fans, he has made up for more than enough in haters who dislike his personality and wish to see him fail. In that regard, they now have tons of ammunition to use against them after he was arrested on charges of disorderly conduct. In 2021, he made rounds on the internet when he got choked out by a bouncer at a bar in Seaside, New Jersey. The problem of troublesome athletes is common in different types of sports, but it happens more so in events like the UFC and WWE. Fans have many expectations, but they have been disappointed time and time again. Dylan also frequently makes posts on Twitter provoking other stars, such as a recent tweet he made in which he said that Jake Paul just had a war with a grandpa, mocking Paul's winning decision over 47-year-old Anderson Silva. The fighter is 2-0 in the cage, with a major camp behind him. However, Scott's hands are tied until he comes back for a fight. It's obvious why he's getting impatient. After all, no one wants to see an investment go to waste, especially in this industry. It's normal to see fighters retire without prolific careers, and Dylan was someone who seemed to have great prospects. Finally, Dylan actually called Scott. Back in February, at the Bellator 275 post-fight press conference, Scott had said that Dylan had been texting him all weekend and saying that he wanted to get back to the ring. Scott said that he'd call him as soon as he got home and see if they could put something together for him, but it'd be up to him. Also, he'd really have to want it, and he'd have to train hard to get back in there. While everyone was looking forward to it, it would seem that the fight ended up not coming to fruition, since there hasn't been any new news about it. Coker said that when they signed him, it was about being a high-level jiu-jitsu master and him reaching the point where he could become a complete MMA fighter. The Bellator CEO said that although he'd believed they were along the way, Dana started getting injured and other things got in the way, but he reiterated that if he's ready to go, they're ready to go. Despite Scott's continued invitations though, the fighter hasn't grabbed the opportunity to return for a fight until now. Dylan is the 2016 IBJJF Pan American Nogi Champion and also the 2016 IBJJF New York Spring Open champion. He is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, having learned under Marcelo Garcia. Now on other news. First off, how Ashton Silva vs. Braulio Rodriguez went. October 29th brought about an epic showdown between Ashton Silva and Braulio Rodriguez. At least it was supposed to, except Ashton needed only 61 seconds to completely flatten his opponent. 61 seconds and his undefeated record of 7-0 had risen to 8-0, and now it's up to the next person to either solidify Ashton's reputation or make history by winning against him. Well, 
Braulio definitely wasn't that person, as he lost in only the first round after Ashton took him down with a vicious combination in the co-main event for the Anderson Silva vs Jake Paul card. The older and more experienced fighter had promised big brother Ashton with a fast start, but the 18-year-old lived up to everyone's expectations and more when he met the start with a left hook, which was immediately followed by a short uppercut. Well, let's just say Braulio's plan backfired badly, because this was all that was needed to end the fight. Of course, he tried to get back on his feet, but everyone knew it was the end. Following up, Arnold Allen wasn't happy about how his match against Calvin Cater ended. Arnold Allen won his fight against Calvin Cater, but not the way he wanted to. Despite this being his 10th straight win, the fighter didn't at all seem happy with the result. Why? Because injuries are always a bad omen when it comes to athletics, which require every part of your body to function properly. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened to Calvin. The fighter appeared to have injured his leg near the end of the first round. It became painfully obvious, though, in the second round when he ended up dropping to the floor. This brought about an unfortunate end to the main event at Saturday's UFC Vegas 63. Allen was understandably despairing about how the fight ended. Not only was his win not exactly hard-earned, but it's also never good to see a fellow fighter injured. He was so affected by the results that Allen could hardly even muster the energy for a title shot against Alexander Volkanovsky. Lastly, how Steve Garcia dropped Chase Hopper in less than two minutes. Steve Garcia wasn't here to play around on Saturday. His match against Chase Hopper ended in what may be the biggest win in his career year. He completely ran over his opponent in Las Vegas, and this was definitely a fight that fans will never forget. It was obvious that Steve was going to win just as that match started. In just the first minute, he had already dropped his opponent multiple times. He definitely showed his worth at the time with the way he fought his opponent. His fierce way of fighting earned a lot of attention from the MMA community. And then at the 1 minute 32 second mark, as the crowd cheered wildly for him, Steve had already won the fight. It was quite an impressive win that earned him a lot of awe, not only from his fans, but also from the other fighters. This is understandable. The way he easily defeated his rival was extremely impressive. Let's just say Chase won't be messing with him anytime soon. Still, it's common to see these sorts of fights in the ring. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of Dylan Dennis and his future with Bellator? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.